So I think one of my most common tropes these days at Christmas time is telling people, I don't need anything. You do not have to get me any presents, okay? Let's just hang out, spend some time together. That'll make me happy. I do not need anything. And I would bet most of you could say the same thing. I mean, sure, a vacation to the Alps with professional ski lessons would be pretty amazing. But I don't expect that of any of you, okay? Well, I mean, if you want to. <laughs> but for the most part, I buy what I need. Now, I know that not everyone is in a financially stable place, but most people in this congregation are likely to say, I have so much stuff, I don't know what to do with everything I have in the first place. I mean, sometimes it baffles me how much stuff we have. Why should I get my nieces another gift when their toy room floor is buried in six inches of solid stuff? Why should I get my mom anything when she's been garage sailing for years now and has still barely made a dent in our garage storage? And her most proud message to me in the past month is that she's been able to get rid of all the junk on her kitchen counters and they've stayed clean for a whole week. Like her joy is not having things there. Why should I get her something more to put on it? And why do I need anything? I mean, unless you're getting me something I would not normally buy for myself, something extravagant, I have all that I need. Way more, honestly, than any one person should ever have to possess. But the position I'm in is not the position of everyone in our neighborhood, I know. There are people next door who are living paycheck to paycheck, social security check to social security check. They know how to live on little, and I guarantee there are things they're going without in order to balance their checkbooks. On the other side of the street, we have people living in a group support home. Some of them may be people who have lost everything. All of them simply need a community who says, you're loved here and we will support you as you go through this hardship. In our own community, we have relationships that are being held onto by a thread. We have adults who are exhausted caring for sick loved ones. We have teens who are looking for a purpose in life. We have people carrying illnesses and struggles no one else can see. But you know what, even among all those people that I just named, I bet you there's a good chunk of them that would also say, I don't really need anything. Because even in our most difficult places, we often have it pretty good in this country, don't we? Which is wonderful to be able to say. That even in our ch most challenging places, we're in a place where we still have it pretty good. But today, I wonder about the answer Jesus gives John. John has his doubts. Jesus isn't tearing down the building down. He's not living in the wilderness like John. He hasn't raised an army. He doesn't own a castle. There's no chaff being thrown in the fire like John predicted. And John's now in prison, on death row. The end is near, and he needs to know, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Did everything I do have a purpose, or did I just waste my life on you? <coughs> I can feel why this is so important to John. And Jesus answers, go and tell John what you have seen and hear. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the dead, deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. A simple answer, things are happening. Specifically, the things prophesied by Isaiah are being done. And Jesus even adds that into the prophecy, the dead are being raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And for me, what's most important in this whole reply that Jesus gives is that it isn't generic. Jesus never says, I'm telling people God loves you and sending them off in peace. 
Jesus never says, look at all these hungry people. I guess I should stop speaking so they can go find food. What Jesus says is the poor have good news brought to them. And I don't think Jesus meant that he just told them, God loves you. It wasn't always physical healing either, but when they came and they said, Jesus, I need your help with something, Jesus answered, how can I help? That's what Jesus always says. Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want? Jesus asked the injured man at the pool, what do you need? The new, good news is never generic. When helping a teen write a sermon at my last congregation, that was the biggest message I gave to him. The good news is not generic. He had written a wonderful sermon expressing her fit, his faith. It was basically Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Um, I am saved by grace through faith and not by works, right? But that word could be proclaimed anywhere, at any time. It was like a treatise on the gospel. But no treatise on the gospel is actually the good news. Every single one of Paul's letters were written to address real issues going on in real communities facing real problems. When he told the people, you know, that, you know, there's, Jesus is going to come with the sound of the trumpet and the blast, and then we, along with those who are dead, are going to be lifted up and, and meet him in the clouds, and that sounds like this beautiful, nice, generic, here's the end of the world thing going on. He wasn't being generic there. He was writing to people who had said, we're losing hope because people in our community are dying. And he said, for those of you who have no hope, I want to speak to that problem. I want to speak to what's going on in your lives right now and tell you the good news that you need to hear. And that's good news that didn't even cost anything, right? He just addressed the troubles of their hearts. Most of the time, that's all I can do as a minister on the pulpit. But this teen in his first attempt to write a sermon, it didn't do that. It was so generic that anyone sitting in the pews would be like, well, that's nice. But what does that mean for me? And so I asked him, how does God's good news make a tangible difference in the lives of the people you're going to speak to today? Because that's the good news. The good news is God's answer to the question, what do you need? What do you want? What's troubling you? What do you really need? What do I need? There's good news I need. I need the problems of my life fixed, and I have problems, yes. I've named some to you in the past. Problems like the ease at which I get angry at my neighbors, okay? Or the neighbors themselves. I'm not sure which. I do not like how easy it is that I get frustrated at things like that. It wasn't who I wanted to be growing up. I need good news on how do I figure that out. And there are other problems that I've chosen not to proclaim as publicly. And honestly, if you want to ask me what the best gift was I've received in this past year, it was the good news of the revelation that I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> now to you, that sounds like a diagnosis to a problem. For me, it means that stomach pains that have been ruining my life for over a decade are finally gone. Like, I spent years trying to figure out what was going on here, and now that I've finally figured it out, I wake up in the morning without hurt. Now that's good news. You have no idea how much good news that is. It has changed my life. I can finally eat freely again. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to put in my body. It's going to result in intense pain 24, 48 hours later. <laughs> it's just so wonderful. I don't have to drive down the road afraid that I'm going to have a problem in the middle of driving that is going to hurt so bad that I don't know what to do. I'm free from that pain. 
Debbie, I know you know that type of good news, right? That's the type of good news people need. Real, tangible, life-altering good news. Not presents, but news that gives us joy. News like, God loves you, and because I know you can't make it to worship, I'm going to show you that love by coming and singing you Christmas carols. That's news we're doing today, right? News like, God loves you, and by the grace of God, I found a way for you to live that makes it, I found a way for you to afford to live without having to go and work at a strip club. There are people who could use news like that, don't you think? News like, God loves you, and I've heard that you may not have anywhere to go for Christmas. Why don't you come to my house? News like, God loves you, and I know you feel bad because you can't afford a gift this year. May I be your family's secret Santa. Good news like, God loves you, and because I know God's grace, I want to be your friend. Even if I know it means that the rest of the kids in school are going to start making fun of me too. Because God's love for you is that important to me. Good news, like God loves you, and you are welcome in this room exactly as you are. You, if you are struggling with your faith, like John in today's reading, we still welcome you here. If you know nothing about Jesus other than what you've heard today so far, you're still welcome here. If you have a million dollars and haven't yet given a dime to the church in this past year, you know what? You're welcome here. I mean that. Those last few examples there point to some challenges in what it means to be part of this good news grace of God. You are loved. And because I know God's love, I express that love to you as well. Even when such actions may result in others not loving me, even when I may not approve of all of your life decisions, you are still loved by God. As one of God's chosen people, wrapped in that loved and called by God to share it, I would hate to have you think for my actions that God doesn't love you. God has good news for the whole world this Christmas. And it's real and it's tangible. And as the people of God, the chosen ones of Christ, those who bear the name Christian, it's our calling to share that good news in real, tangible ways. Not just with those beyond our walls, but also with those in this room. Because I know there's no one in this room who, when I asked you, what do you need, didn't have something in mind. Didn't come up with something where you're like, you know, I could use this type of good news right now. And not just with those within these walls, but also those beyond the congregation. Because I know there's no one out there as well who doesn't have good news they need to hear today. Good news like Jesus is alive. Christ is acting in this world now, here, on our behalf. And for the person who is drowning in filth, here you are washed in God's grace. For the person hungering for the taste of hope, here you can come and indulge in the promises of God. For the person thirsting for righteousness, here you can come and drink in God's love. For the person longing to belong, here you will be wrapped in the arms of Jesus' grace. Because the Holy Spirit is here, bringing heaven to earth in real ways. And there is good news here in this place. Good news for everyone who needs it. And so I ask you again, what do you want? What do you need? What can God do for you today? Amen.